Hello, I'm Terry Soule, and this is Programming Chaos. And in this video, I'm going to be illustrating recursion. Recursion is a programming technique that is both very powerful and at least initially very confusing. And I find that looking at it from a graphical perspective can make it much simpler to understand. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about is recursion. And I'm going to begin simply by drawing a square. So what I have for my code here is sort of processing boilerplate, our setup and our draw function. And what I'm going to do is draw a square, but I'm going to do it with my own function. So I'm going to call this my square. So here's the function. Like I said, it's called my square. I say the location that I want for the square, the size I want for the square, and then I actually use processing's rectangle function to draw the square. Seems a little odd, but as you'll see in a minute, this is going to be useful for understanding recursion. And in order to make this work, I have to call the function. So I want my square drawn in the middle of the screen, so half the width, half the height. And then in terms of the size, I'm going to make it 20% of the overall width. And I might adjust that a little bit, but here we go. A square. It's not in the middle of the screen the way that I would like. That's because when we give the coordinates for a rectangle, it's the upper left coordinates. And I can fix that by changing the rectangle mode. So if I switch to rec mode center, now when I draw the rectangle, the x, y is going to be the location of the center of the square. And I think I do indeed want my square to be a little bit bigger. There we go. So I have a square. Now recursion is simply a function that calls itself in order to draw or to do another task. So it's a function that is calling itself. So all I want to do here is have my square function call itself again, and I'll have it draw a slightly smaller square in the upper left-hand corner of my original square. So I'm going to take my original square and move to the upper left-hand corner. I think I'll also switch my background to just a light gray. So draw a rectangle, and then I'm going to ask it to draw another rectangle. There we go. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and then I'm going to recursively call my square, but the new location is going to be at the old location, but shifted to the left by half the length and shifted up, negative Y is up by half the length. And the size of the new square will be half as big as the old one. So multiplying by 0.5. And I also need to wrap this in an if condition so that I stop recursing at some point. So if length is larger than, let's say, 4. So what this will do is draw my original rectangle, shift to the left and up, and draw a rectangle, which is actually, in this case, a square, that's half as big. So a square and then another square. That is not what we're going to see. So pause the video if you want and think, well, what are we actually going to see when I run this? Okay, let's run it. So we didn't see just a square with another square in the corner. We see a whole series of squares. And that is because a recursive function basically forms a loop. It draws my first rectangle, this large one, and then as long as the length is larger than four, I call my square again to draw another rectangle, this one. But in the process of drawing that second rectangle or that second square, it says, oh, wait a minute, length is still larger than four. Let's draw another one. And in the process of drawing that other one, it says, oh, wait, length is still larger than four. Let's draw another one. So this is recursion. And all of a sudden, out of just a few lines of code, I have this repeating process. And recursion is used to solve more practical problems than this, typically with something called divide and conquer. Take your big problem, divide it into smaller pieces, and solve each of those smaller pieces. That's what makes recursion a powerful problem-solving tool. But it's also nice for drawing cool figures. So let's keep going with this. The first thing I want to do is show what happens if I don't have this stopping condition. 
So this tells me if the length is less than four, don't try and draw another square. What happens if I get rid of that? Well, we start drawing squares and then the program crashes and we get this error down here, a little hard to see, stack overflow error. This sketch is attempting too much recursion. So it's saying you've tried to recurse too many times. The way recursion works is it runs this function draws a rectangle, and then it stores that function because it might not be done with it. It stores it in memory while it tries running another copy of the function. And then while running the second copy, it has to store it in memory while it tries to run a third copy. So it's remembering all of those old functions in memory and what it's actually doing is stacking them up. And because this is an infinite loop, it stacks up too many and we run out of memory. This Stack Overflow error message is exactly where the website Stack Overflow gets its name from. This kind of recursion without a bounding condition. So let me stop that and put back in my limiting factor. And there we go. This works fine. Now we can go further with this. Certainly one thing you'll notice that maybe is annoying you a little bit, certainly annoying me a little bit, is that it's not very symmetric. So instead of just squares going to the upper left, let's put in some squares going to the lower right. And it turns out that's easy to do. I can simply copy this code and say, well, instead of going to the upper left, I want to go to the lower right. And so now I should see a square with a series of smaller squares going to the upper left and a square with a series of smaller squares going to the lower right. And that is not correct either. So again, pause the video and think about what we're really going to see here. Okay, let's run it. Uh, much more complicated. So what is going on? Well, we draw our first big square and then we recursively say draw one in the upper left and the lower right. So here's the one in the upper left. That's easy enough. Here's the one in the lower right. But when we draw the one in the upper left, it says draw one in its upper left, here we go, but also in its lower right. So not only do we have them going sort of up and to the left and down and to the right, but for each of those, we're going up and to the left and down and to the right. And so we get a whole series of squares. And sort of a cool pattern, but this is the power of recursion, just a few lines of code and we can generate these very complicated patterns. In this case, it is a fractal and fractal just means that if you magnify it, a pattern, you see similar, it doesn't have to be identical, but a very similar pattern at different scales. In this case, it is exactly the same pattern at each scale. So if I want to sort of continue the symmetry, I'm going to take these two lines of code copy them over. There we go. And in this case, I'm going to do upper left, excuse me, I'm going to do upper right, and then I'll make this a minus and that a plus, and that'll give me the lower left. And there we completely fill in our pattern in all directions and I get a very nice complicated pattern. Exactly what it looks like depends entirely on this 0.5 here. So let's imagine, I'll go ahead and change it to 0.4. That's how much we scale down each time. So now you can see I've scaled down by 0.4 and you can actually see the recursion better. So if you want to take this program further, we can play around with this scaling factor. So that's a very nice one to adjust to get different effects. One last thing that I would like to point out with recursion is you'll notice that the smaller squares are drawn on top of the bigger squares. And that's because of the order that I'm doing things in. First, I draw my main square, my biggest one, and then I draw the four smaller ones on top of it. And then recursively for each of those smaller ones, I draw smaller ones on top and on top. So they basically stack up. I could take this draw and move it to the end. And so now the recursion in a sense works the opposite way. And this is where things get confusing. Instead of drawing my big square, I start by asking to draw the smaller squares. And then instead of drawing the smaller square, 
I asked to draw the smaller ones and the smaller ones and the smaller ones and the smaller ones. So the smallest squares get drawn first and the bigger squares get drawn afterwards. And that looks like this. In many ways, not as interesting a pattern because you don't get to see all of the details. So I like, in terms of the appearance, to draw it the other way around. But it is a good way to sort of think about recursion. With recursion, we go deeper and deeper into the recursion, but then we also have to recurse back out. And in this case, it's on the way back out the way back down through that stack that we're drawing things. So we begin by saying we want to draw the biggest square, but before we get around to drawing it, we're sidetracked by drawing these smaller squares. And then before we draw those smaller squares, we're sidetracked by drawing these smaller squares. So we end up getting all the way to the bottom. Our length gets to be too small, so we skip over the if. We draw those teeniest squares, and then we start to unwind our recursion and draw bigger and bigger squares on top. So depending on how you like such things, you can do this in either order. Another cool effect, if you like, is to draw the big rectangle first and then draw a smaller version of it last. So again, I'm gonna put in a somewhat arbitrary scaling factor here. And now you can sort of see it draws the biggest square first and the smaller square on top of it. And then it comes back and draws this 0.8 size square on top of everything else. And eh, 0.8 is probably still a little too big. Let's make this quite a bit smaller. And there you get a much more complicated pattern because it's both drawing squares sort of on the way into the recursion and as it unwinds. So there's a bunch of different things that you play with. You can adjust the scale if you want. You can adjust where it draws those shapes. There's no reason why instead of a rectangle, it couldn't say draw circles here. And I haven't even touched color. So we could also change the color of the rectangle each time, maybe based on the length. So as the squares get smaller, they get redder or greener. Lots of things to play with here. If you get any cool patterns that you particularly like, go ahead and put a comment in the comments down below and maybe I can talk about it in a future video. So there, a nice introduction to the recursion for you. Thanks.